All right, this topic is something I'm interested in and have been for a while, but open source LLMs. Partly because a lot of the times I want to do something for a client, they want to know how private or the data is. And if I say, hey, I'm sending your data to the API for cloud or for OpenAI, you know, I can't say for sure how private it is. I could host a bedrock or something, but why do that when I could just host an LLM? I could host it on a machine in their office. I could host it on a machine on a provider for like 200 bucks a month and they can have decent LLM access. So in this case, I'm going to do Olama and we'll be grabbing some models from here to show how they can work and show how they replace OpenAI or, yeah, I think I used OpenAI in a lot of these and just see how they work and how well they do. So in one example, I'll use it in a spreadsheet automation. I did a video on another one. I'll do it on an agentic code review. This one is RAG, which is very common. And then this one is Vision, which is really cool because this is RAG, but it uses Vision to really analyze the document a little bit more fully. And again, like when I say again, I mean, because this is my second recording. Why? Like, you know, privacy is awesome. I mean, the fact that this goes only to the, their LLMs and it doesn't go anywhere else. Like, this is the tricky part. Like, I could run this in their office, disconnect it from the internet, and it's there. It's not going to some kind of secret server somewhere. So it's just hard to say anything but privacy on that one. The cost, it's free. I mean, that machine's just sitting there being used by other things. So it can also do this. But I could host a $200 one somewhere and use that and not pay for all the monthly payments I'm paying now for all these other services. Not that I would do that because I do so much with AI, but I'm just saying you could see how it could bring down the cost. And it keeps getting better. I mean, this might be a moment where open source really is comparable to the paid stuff. So, and I think it keeps coming back and forth. Here's like this recent coding one that just came out. Like, look at that. Like the scores are just up there. I mean, so... But a lot of people have this impression that it's not as good. And so I'm going to drop it into these working workflows and prove that it is as good, maybe. And let's look. And I'll show one area where what's so important here. So in this one, I did a video on this where I was putting different things into a spreadsheet, like recipes and, and to-do items and <clears throat> scraping URLs. So this guy has to know all these tools and which ones to use. And so you know, this test data coming in will be, let's see, this is the URL, go get it, save this recipe. Not, not the most specific prompt in the world, but see, this is what I want to get at is I, I took the prompt that was more simple and in which OpenAI did a good job of like interpreting or interpreting for me. And I, I had it more fleshed out. So that these open source models in this case would, would, would potentially have a better chance of knowing what tools it has. And I think it helped. And my point here is that I think in the end, if you're going to use these models, you just got to take a little bit more time using AI to make prompts. Make sure the prompts are very clear, especially with tools. Make sure you list out the tools potentially. Try one or the other. See what works. And, and it worked out really well. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm using Quen. I chose Quinn just because it's a little newer and it, and it works with tools really well. I could use DeepSeek or Llama 3.2. I use Mistral. I think Quinn just did a little bit better job of using the tools. So in this one, I don't have to do a chat because the workflow already has the question. And we will see that it will use the scrape URL and then it will use the add recipe. And there's no memory here because I wanted each run to be fresh. So the scrape URL is just a fire crawl thing, nothing special. And then it returns the results from that. It's only orange because I clicked on it and it, it thinks I altered it. And then it adds the recipe for the hundredth time to that recipe tab. So if we go there, now it could be smart enough to say you already have it, but that would be my prompt getting smarter, right? Like that's a good point, you know? So I could delete those for the heck of it and then come back to it. And well, it's almost done, give it a moment. It went back there. Would it add it again and again? If it does, that just means I have to prompt better, right? So there it is adding it again. Let's see why, like just more prompting. But I want to do, I want to ask it about it. Again, it has a get recipe tool. This prompt says you have a tool called get recipes and it uses it. So there you go. Nice. I guess Quinn is thinking I, I, it could be faster if I didn't do that. Maybe I can turn that off and, and there you go. Oh, it even has a view recipe. Oh, nice. Nice work. 
So again, prompting though, maybe my prompt should have been like always return the link, you know? So, okay, so it succeeded. I dropped out, I, I took out OpenAI and, and now I've saved myself some money. I can run this every day because it checks every day and gives me a report. It checks the email box every few minutes and if it finds anything I send to it, then, you know, it has a result. It could be a lead, an invoice or tasks I send myself and that's it. So that's a win. That guy did his job. Now this one, this one is tedious because it has to go get the code and do the stuff. But by the time you're done with it, all it's really doing is saying, hey, go review this code and then go check the code for good SEO, which would be like whatever pages. So both of these tools are also using AI and they're also using the Olama model. All right, so now I ran it and what we're getting out of here is a bunch of results and that those are AIs doing their job and the, they do a good job. So it works. The quality of the output, I'd have to go back and evaluate and I could use the newer N8N evaluation option. But in this case, it all comes back to here in this guy, once again, using Quen. I could probably use a different type for this. Maybe I could try and see what works. I end up in a situation where it's not a success. And that's because I have trouble with structured data and I don't know how to get around this one yet. I've had it work plenty of times in Olama. I just got to see what I'm doing wrong here. But I'm telling it to give me this. And I even forced the Olama to respond and output JSON, which is cool. And I also, let's see if I could find it. I also, I could have turned this on, but I turned it off so I could just have one system managing the format. And I thought it would help, but this one didn't work either where you force it to have structured output. So I could work on this more. I'm gonna call that a fail for now, but I know I can get it to work. And there's so many ways around this particular situation. But in the end, I would just get it to work because I know Olama can do that. But we see that the agent of code is working. So we have a win, a win. And now let's go to RAG because that's one of the more common things we do with the LLMs. And if we look, and this is important because with the private data, law firms, financials, medical, I don't want to shove them to an API that's open AI or whatever. I want to just keep them on a machine we know. And in this case, we're talking like a machine that's maybe 400, 500 bucks sitting in the office, or you host a machine for 200 bucks outside the office and it will do it. But in this case, we are going to look at RAG. Let's see if I'm zoomed in right. Yeah. So this guy, is going to take some data from a file I made up. It's about an RFP and then it goes and gets it from Superbase and then it takes it and puts it right in here as a, where is that guy? Binary file, binary file which is cool. I don't have to pre-process it. But I'm pretty sure that's just OCR and I'll explain in the next one the vision part to it. So let me go clean out this database so we don't have just a ton of stuff in here. So this is all the documents. And if we run that, we see that we're getting decent speeds. It's a small document. We see we're getting free embeddings that are private. Omic seems to be really good. And we then do the data loading and chunk it up and everything. We could do more, obviously. So now we have the data in the database. So I should be able to ask some questions about it. And I think, what is the grant amount? Let's just ask it that. So if we go to here, what is the... The model down here I'm using, which happens to be Quinn as well, it might take a moment because it has a thinking step and I don't know if I can turn that off. I don't know if I can, I wonder if I can. I could use a different model. Man, so many good options there though. All right, so it went through the process and I said, okay, I'm thinking and then it returned the results. So you get some nice answers here. Don't worry about this guy. This is still using open source models to do the work. So it's just using a open source embedding engine, which is the guy we use up here to embed the query. And then it's using Olama to just get the results. And I'll show it in the next one. So we see that it's using RAG and it's doing just fine for both embedding and querying. Now the hybrid search is really great video here to watch. These guys are really good. So give that one a go. You can go here and find data about videos I like and want to share with people. You can even just ask here for like hybrid search and you can get an answer. So give it a go.
Okay, so back to this one here. So now I want to show this next one, which is cool because we get vision and rag. And so you get to see both. So let me go remove the data from here because let me close one of these because now we have too many open. Let's get rid of these documents. So now we're going to give it a PDF. Now, why do we want vision and in rag? So imagine these are really poor charts or charts I grabbed from another website or charts I made in a different system and I paste in screenshots to my tool that did generates PDFs. You can't OCR those charts. So what we're doing here is using vision to say, hey, here's a page. Here's a PNG representation of the page. Look at the page and give me a summary, not only of the words, but the charts and everything else and all the data we need. So you can basically take a page and then produce a more contextual rich page out of that for the OCR, for the RAG system. So if I execute this and remain quiet, it will go through the process and I'll speed it up. I'll talk for a moment while it goes and then I'll just keep quiet. So here we're gonna go get the page using a tool I use called Sterling PDF we can then turn that into images. But here's what matters. Here I send it off to Olama and I say, go generate results from this. And the prompt is like, here, this is, what is this about? What do I want? What do I want you to do? I'm using Gemma and, and we're giving it just API generate. And so what we're getting back is the content of that page summarized or not even summarized, but ex fleshed out by the AI system. So really nice. So now our RAG system becomes a more rich data set of, the, of those PDF pages. Really important in my opinion. I don't think most people are just copy pasting images or taking charts from one thing and pasting. Like you don't get a PDF that a good poplar or something can rip apart in OCR. What you get is a PDF done poorly, not in a bad way, just that's what people do. And so now you can really dig into it and get everything out of it. So now that we have the data in there, let's refresh. I can ask a question. Now I can't really, let's see, I always tried this and let me go grab something from the PDF, sorry. Here we go, let's try this one. So we're gonna go there and we're gonna say, and then we'll do it now. This is again, so we have an example of open source embeddings working. We have open source vision working, really cool. And in this one, we're back to open source embeddings to embed the question and open source models to retrieve the data. So just really nice. This is an AI agent with tools. Those tools know to go get the data from the retrieval system. It takes a moment, not because of power, but because I'm using a model that thinks. So just give it a moment. And then we get some results. I think it should be accurate. If not, just keep prompting, keep getting that data in the prompts. And it had it a few moments ago, because this is take number three, where it even said, I don't have the data. And I realized I had some missing data. So it's a good example of it not hallucinating. It will not hallucinate. So here we got vision rags. I go through the four tests. We see it did agentic automations. We see it was able to do a lot of stuff here besides the structured output. We see RAG working really well and Vision working well. So again, free cost, privacy, no, no questions there. And it just keeps getting better and better. The recent one that just came out is Kimi K2, where we get into agentic coding. And it's starting to beat these other models. This is this one I'm going to use, but I can't use because it's not private. Obviously, I can use it. I'm going to use it as part of the flow here that will actually fix the code for us as it goes through, which is nice which will be nice. Okay, so there you go, a sense of like open source. Is it any good? Yes, all of this stuff, there's no one model for anything, so find the right models, use whatever tools or data you have to say, okay, what is the one I want? I want one that's good for tools, I want one that's good for thinking, and just keep trying them out and get your prompts really good because prompting matters more with open source models because there's no system prompts that you don't know about really keeping them on rails. So you get a prompt better, bigger, longer, or just be just use AI to make better prompts. All right, that should get you going, get you to see this is a great option. So give it a try. All right, thank you.